Clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah.
Praise God, hallelujah. Your life is kind and patient. You love me so much, Jesus. You love me so much. How wonderful it is to express our love for the Lord and thank Him for yet another week of an encounter in the presence of the Lord. I, I feel so excited to come before God's presence and worship Him and bless him our king our master our lord our savior our deliverer our song our righteousness our wisdom we thank him for today for by his cross everything and every day was accomplished we thank god for that today we have the privilege to come before his presence again and worship at his feet in the midst of the condition we find ourselves we can still praise the Lord. Bible says, No things give thanks unto God, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And I keep saying that you must thank God for the breath you even breathe, the air you breathe. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So thank God, money or no money, car or no car, wife or no wife, husband or or no husband, house or no house, job or no job, in all things, give thanks unto God. Don't murmur, don't complain, never ever be embittered the least about where you find yourself in life now, because God is able to turn things around 
and make things better for you. Come on, shout the big hallelujah. hallelujah. Today I come your way again with a communion service, but with a special message for you in particular that will change your mindset, that will change your thinking, your perspective, that will change your life eventually. So hook up with me for the next 30 minutes, okay, as we delve into scriptures. Our month's theme is fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. The month of May is a month to be fruitful. Why are we saying this? Things are happening around the world. The COVID-19 has robbed people from their jobs. Things are slow. But we know that we got all things are possible. In the time of recession, in the time of famine, that's when God shows himself strong. In the scriptures, when things have gone so bad that people were giving up in life, that was when God set in. So God can set in. In your life, God can change things around. In your life, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think of. Praise God. And so the month of May is your month of fruitfulness. Say the month of May is my month of fruitfulness. Say I am ordained to be fruitful. Hallelujah. You see, God made Adam and Eve and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and take dominion. You see? So if God said that, I come your way and say the same thing. That be fruitful Amen. and multiply. Amen. By the power of God's word, by the mandate in God's word, I pronounce you fruitful Amen. this evening. Amen. Any situation that seems barren, I command it to change of to fruitfulness Amen. in your life to in Jesus' name. Amen. Any condition in your life in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your business, in your family, I command fruitfulness there right now. Amen. I invoke God's fruitfulness upon your life tonight in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In the midst of COVID-19, when things are going so bad, may God lift you up. May God encourage you. May God push you forward. May God lift your leg and put on higher ground. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Come on, shout a big amen to God. Now, the key scripture we use is Isaiah 32, verse 15. Isaiah 32, 15 says that, Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be, be, be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Again, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted a forest. So we see that it is possible for a wilderness to become fruitful. It is possible for barrenness to be changed to fruitfulness. When the Holy Ghost comes, things don't remain the same again. We release the Holy Ghost. Through God's word into your life tonight. Receive right now. May the power of God come over your, your life and change every barren life into fruitfulness. Whatever is not working well, may the Holy Ghost make it work well. Amen. Imagine Mary. When he was, she was told you conceive, she said, how can this be? And the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost can do something in our lives to make us fruitful. May you receive the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Now when God's word is coming, he comes the package of anointing. So the Holy Ghost is working with, it, with God's word. So open your heart tonight and receive this message on fruitfulness. Now the message is also subtitled fruitfulness of the mind. Can, can we say it? Everybody go. Fruitfulness of the mind. Say it again. Fruitfulness of the mind. Now, why are we saying so? It's so important to understand that when your mind becomes fruitful, it impacts your life. Now, first Thessalonians 5, 
verse 23. First, Thessalonians 5, 23 says that, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So the whole man is made up of your spirit, your soul, and your body. And the prayer prayed for us here is that, that our whole man, spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless, faultless, until Jesus Christ comes. If he doesn't come and we have to go to him, as we go to him, he wants us to be blameless, Without any fault. No fault in our spirit man. No fault in our soulish realm. And no fault in the body. God gave you your spirit to relate to him. No fault there. He gave you the soul. Okay. To think and to, cre to create this into being. No fault there. The body is given to us to relate to our physical world. No fault there. He wants a perfect situation where your body is healthy, your mind is he your soul is healthy, and as well, your spirit mind is healthy. So, Christianity is not just praising God and giving God the glory. It's a life of fruitfulness in spirit and soul and body. And body. Hallelujah. Now, I quoted, let me quote again. Tell John 2, tell John chapter 1 verse 2 says that, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So your soul must prosper and the prosperity of your soul must impact your health, your body. God wants you to be healthy. I mean, perfect health is your portion, but then it starts from somewhere. I wish above all things that thou, that thou you may prosper as your soul prospers, you'll be in health and prosper as your soul. Now, the part of your soul, the three parts of your soul, we have your emotion, we have your will, and your intellect. These are very important aspects of your soul. Your emotion, your feeling, and then your will. Okay? And then your mind or your intellect. These must be fruitful. Why am I teaching this? Because Bible says that for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. How you are in your body depends on how you are in your mind. So your thinking impacts your behavior. That is why it's important to talk about your mind. If you are fruitful in your mind... It reflects in the way you do things. That's why when Jesus Christ came, he said, Repent. Repent ye for the kingdom of God's Satan. Repent means change your mind. And Jesus Christ preached repentance. John preached repentance. After they've gone, we keep preaching repentance because repentance impacts your behavior. That's why it's so important to teach about being fruitful in your, in your mind. Now, in the book of Proverbs, uh, Matthew 22, verse 35 to 30, 38. Matthew 22, 35 to 38. says that the one of them which was a lawyer asked him the question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. So it's important. Your mind must love God. Your mind must love God. Just as your spirit loves God. God wants you to love God with your spirit. And your soul. And your mind. It's important. You must love God with your emotions. With, with your will. Be willing to love God. Without any coercion. Be willing to do things for God. Would that be forced? Decide that you love God in your mind. Once your mind is made up to love God, nothing can stop you. It's like love. It's like loving people. Once you decide to love somebody, nothing can stop you. 
So decide that you love God with your spirit and with your mind and with your strength. Hallelujah. I'm only recapping what I shared last week. So don't worry. We'll continue. Amen. So loving God must be done. Love God with your soul, with your body, every part of your being. God wants it. He wants your mind. He wants your intellect. He wants your emotions. Sometimes at church, people cannot even praise God. They can't dance. You must give expression of how you feel in your spirit, in your emotions. If you are praying and laughter comes, laugh. Yeah, you are praying and laughter comes, just laugh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, God, we think God is like a wicked old man somewhere with a hammer. And if you don't behave well, he will hit your head. No, 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 no. God is love. You can chat with God like you chat with your friend. So if you are praying and laughter comes, break forth with the laughter. If you are praying and weeping starts, you start shedding tears, shed tears. Let your emotions be expressed. When we are pressing God, you feel like dancing and jumping. Jump and dance, dance with the Lord. That is loving God with your strength and with your emotions. Praise God. Give expression. I said give expression hallelujah so our focus is being fruitful in our mind and i'll show you a few ways as we began last week last week i said the first thing you must do is to have god's word in your mind you need god's word in your mind you must have god's word in your mind because god's word is so important that if you have god's word in your mind it will impart your behavior god's word is powerful to change our lives and destiny. So you must have God's word in your mind. Amen. Yeah. Now, when God's word is coming, you must, what's the for Press to hear the word. I said that last week, and I'll continue and say it again. Press to hear the word. Luke 5, verse 1. Luke 5, 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Jenny Saret. Amen. People press to hear the word. Okay? Including Peter. If you read the account following, it was after this that Jesus performed the miracle of multiplication of fish for Peter. Fish was multiplied. Peter said, I've toiled all night, I've caught nothing. It was after the word that this miracle was performed. But the people pressed, they pressed, they pressed to hear the word. So, you have to learn to press for the word. Press for the word. Amen. I said press for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Luke 8, 19 to 20, 21, it says that, They came to him, his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press, the press. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand outside, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Now this had come to Jesus. The pressure was so much that even his parents could not get entrance to come to him. We must put pressure on Jesus to hear the word. Look, all you need is the word to have all your needs met. All you need is the word to have all your needs met. Hallelujah. So press the, for the word. Focus on the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, I said engage the word of God with all readiness of mind. The first one is what? Press for the word. Number two, engage the word of God with all readiness of what? Mind. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 5 1. And it says that, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. It is evil to go to church without hearing God's word. Yeah. It says that keep your foot when thou goest to the house. I mean, be careful. Even walking, 
not to distract anybody. You can't come to church and be standing outside. People come to church, they stand outside. People come, they make distractions. It is not too good to come to church and be walking about. Bible says that keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Make sure you don't distract anybody. These Christians are so careless. We walk in the house during the church service, but we are changing. Hallelujah. Amen. I said we are changing. Amen. Some stand outside through and through until church closes and they are chatting. Just having a chat. Oh my goodness. The major thing you must endeavor to get is the word. Be more ready to hear. Some come to church and they are playing games with their phones in church. What do you expect to get? Here it says, avoid distractions. Even keep your foot. Make sure you don't walk to make, the, to make noise. That's why important. they will wait until the, God's word is come before they start walking to church with their high heels. Go, 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 high heel. It's, when God's word is coming, now that misses somebody having come to church late will now walk go, 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 go. Bible says keep your foot with God's words. Don't distract anybody. And because if you do that, somebody may miss his blessing. Praise God. Say, so be more what? Ready. Be more ready. Make your mind ready to hear than to give a sacrifice of what fools. Matthew 15, verse 10. Jesus' attitude towards hearing. Matthew 15, 10. Right? He says that. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. If you cannot hear, you will not understand. Understanding starts from hearing. The point of hearing is so important. It starts from the point of hearing because there, there are three doorways to your mind. Your ear, your eyes, and your mouth. The three major entry points to your mind, the soul, are your eyes. What you see enters your mind. We shall share that later. What you hear enters your mind. And what you speak enters your mind. And these three entry points are very crucial as far as your life is concerned. Yeah. So Christ told the multitude, he, there were many, he said that, look, hear and understand. It means that your understanding is 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 dependent on how you hear now again proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 Proverbs 4 20 says that my son attend to my words and incline thy ear unto my sense incline that means that tilt your ear down and pay attention don't let anybody distract your attention pay attention it's just like a master in karate teaching um an apprentice. The apprentice sits down and the, and the crosses his legs and the karate master sits up and begins to give instruction. You see, you try your best to incline, open your ears and hear the instruction of the instructor. That's how we treat God's word. Amen. Amen. It's so important. Some of these are very important. Now, when you hear God's word, there are benefits that come to you. It generates understanding. First, it generates what? Understanding. It's a hear and what? Understand. Number two, it generates faith. Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want faith, you must first of all hear God's word. The degree of hearing can determine the degree of faith you receive. So learn to hear. Sometimes after preaching, you hear and hear again. So go for the CD. Get a message on a pen drive. Put it in your phone. And keep hearing and hearing and hearing. Amen. Last two nights, I was doing that and I slept over. I was hearing a message by a man of God and I slept over. My wife too was doing the same thing. But when I slept over, when I got up, I could hear her earpiece still playing. So, ah, then don't sleep out. I'll sleep on and off. That is the work. 
That is the work. You sleep on the north. You keep hearing, you get up, and you are still hearing. We preach God's word. We close church. You buy and make the message. Buy wisdom and sell it not. Get it on the pen drive. On a CD, and keep playing, and keep hearing, and keep hearing, and as as you keep hearing and hearing, faith shall come to you. Amen. You want faith? The early morning news will not give you faith. The early morning news on CNN and, and Sky won't give you faith. They are good message. They are good. They are they are they are, they are information for the world. But is there faith in them? Ask yourself the question. So. Learn to plug into hearing the word of God. All the miracles, most of the miracles Christ performed in the Bible, they came because people heard. People heard about God's word. For instance, as a blind man, Luke chapter 18, 35. Luke 18, 35. A blind man was there, the blind beggar. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. You won't beg. Hallelujah. Amen. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth, hallelujah, hallelujah, Amen. is passing by. Hallelujah. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Amen. And he cried out, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he, had, he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. Now listen, this blind beggar has heard that there was somebody called Jesus of Nazareth who had been healing the sick. So, he, he heard that this Jesus healer, physician, was passing by. And so he decided to take advantage of Christ's presence. And he began to cry. You see, his faith was energized when he heard that Jesus was passing by. This Jesus was a healer. So, when you hear, it impacts faith. Hear it impacts faith. That was how come this man had to cry. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. When he started crying, a cry of faith, he arrested Jesus. Though there were many people around, his cry arrested Jesus. In the multitude, there's a voice of faith that says somebody is calling you. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes be aggressive. People will tell you, come on, shut up. You can't make it. Tell them I can make it. They say, shut up. You can never go forward. Say, I can go forward. They tried to shut this man down. And he was healed. And the begging stopped. You won't beg again. Amen. May God touch your life. May the begging stop in your life. Amen. The man was healed and he was transformed from his beggar's, beggarly state to a man who was no more begging. Oh, may God heal you tonight. Amen. It starts with the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So, miracles performed in Jesus' time, basically, most of them came through the hearing of faith. In Mark 5, verse 25, Mark 5, 25 to 29, and I read, and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Oh my goodness. When she had heard of Jesus, listen, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch by his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway, hallelujah, Amen. the fountain of blood was dried up. And she felt in her body 
that she was healed of that plague. Listen, this woman had tried everything possible, naturally possible. The best doctors in town had tried. Great surgeons had tried. I mean, all the specialists in town had tried, but none worked. We thank God for doctors. Oh, they are wonderful people. They are gifted. They are anointed. But you see, they have a limitation. They are limited sometimes. That is why faith comes in. Faith doesn't make sense. Yeah, because faith is against the senses. And it's true. She heard about Jesus that this man could heal. And based on what she heard, she decided, it's my time. It's my time. It's my, it's my time. I want to touch Jesus. And this woman was actually very weak. Hemorrhoid. I mean, hemor hemorrhoid, right? Hemorrhoid. And it was, she was bleeding for several years. 12 years. Having blood flow. And by a situation, she could never even qualify to come among people because such people were unclean. So, two things disqualified her. My third thing was that there was a crowd. That was a big disincentive. But this woman said, I'll defy my state of weakness. I defy my state of uncleanness where I can't go among people. I defy the crowd. And by faith, she began to penetrate the crowd. And she was going. And she was going. And she was going. And she was going. Penetrating and penetrating. And was crawling. And she was going. When she got there, she just bent down and touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, the fountain says, Give God some clap offering. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so amazing. So, so see the thing? It was supernatural. Faith unleashes and releases the supernatural. Faith doesn't make sense, but faith is powerful. Hallelujah. How did it start? She heard. So she heard about Jesus. So hearing is so important. If you can keep hearing and hearing, one day your miracle shall, shall surface. So don't stop hearing. Keep hearing. It will, it will learn by all means. One day to register by all means. So keep hearing and hearing and hearing. Acts 8, verse 5 to verse 7. Acts 8, 5 to 7. Then Philip went to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those, those things which Philip Speak. Listen. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing. Oh, this is the Bible. Acts 8 from 5 to verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out from, of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame, were healed. Now, miracles are performed in the ministry of Philip. How did it happen? The people with one accord gave heed. They listened. They, li they listened. The things which Philip was sharing. And they hearing. They listened, were hearing. And then they saw miracles. So miracles don't just happen. Let me repeat. Miracles don't just happen. Write it in your book. Miracles don't just happen. Miracles are generated by faith. How does faith come? By hearing. So if you can keep on hearing God's word, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of recession, in the midst of negativity, in the midst of unfavorable conditions in your life, in the midst of all the hula baloo, please don't stop hearing God's word. That is why in the midst of COVID, every pastor is still preaching. If we stop preaching, we are finished. People must hear that word of faith to believe God. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to keep preaching the faith message. People must hear on the television, hear on Facebook Live, hear through radio. Every means possible, we must preach the word. Amen. 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 We can't go to church on Sunday, but we must hear God on Sunday. God's word cannot be hindered. Amen. Amen. 
God's word cannot be hindered. So, don't stop hearing. I said, don't stop hearing. Now, my last example, which I'll continue next week, is this. You can receive the spirit of God, the anointing of God, and miracles by hearing the, the word of God. You can receive what? The Holy Spirit, the anointing, and miracles by the hearing of what? Faith. Ezekiel 2, verse 1 and verse 2. Ezekiel 2, 1 and 2 says that, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. In that sense, the Spirit Entered into me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered into me when he spake. When I heard him, the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. That I heard him that spake unto me. So the anointing, the spirit entered to Ezekiel when he heard the person speak unto him. So the Holy Ghost can enter us when we hear uh, God's word. In Acts 10, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on those who had the word. Amen. Amen. And they all the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak. So, these people were hearing Peter preach. Peter didn't pray for them. He didn't pray for them. He was only preaching. He was teaching and preaching. And as they kept hearing and hearing Peter preach, instantly, Holy Ghost entered them. And they began to speak in tongues. Hando shaka stapata. Would that have been prayed for? They began to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are preaching God's word. As I'm preaching right now, receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Receive the power of God. Amen. 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 My last two scriptures, Galatians 3, verse 2. It says that this only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. It means the Holy Ghost can be received what? By the hearing of faith. Some of us say, Can I see the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues? If we can believe God. As you hear me and we pray, Holy Ghost will follow up right now. Yes, you, you speak right now. Amen. The last scripture, Galatians 3 verse 5. 3 verse 5, Galatians says that, He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit, and worked miracles among you, doeth he by the words of the law, or by the hearing of faith. So when we hear faith messages, what happens? Miracles are performed. You want miracles of fruitfulness in your business? Hear God's word. Your miracles of fruitfulness in your womb, hear God's word. You want fruitfulness in every area of your life, it will come by hearing God's word. Place value on hearing. Place value on hearing. And next week, I'll come with you, I'll come your way again and show you negative effects of hearing the wrong things. Because what you hear can impact your life. If you hear God's word, faith will come. You hear some wrong things, wrong things will come. So what you hear can bring the good or the bad. But I, call, I challenge you, be a hearer of the word. And may God bless you for hearing me for the few 30 minutes that I have preached. May God bless you. May you be fruitful Amen. in your life, Amen. in your marriage, Amen. in your business. Amen. After I finish preaching, we, you, you go to uh, YouTube, go back to the same message. Play it again. Sometimes you have to pay for it. I mean, not like offering, but you have to pay data. Buy data. Data is God right now. Data is a big God right now. You don't have data, you can't be on Facebook. You can't, you can't browse. So if you want to hear, buy extra data so that you can play and play again. That's what I do. I buy data. I hear men of God. I hear powerful messages to enrich my faith. So after I finish, Charlie, if you are serious, a serious student of God's word, you want to hear more and more, go to YouTube. And this message will be there. And hear it when you are sleeping. 
hear it when you are working in your garden people hearing when you are driving in your car hey hear it sometimes put everything off the news the bad news off and hear god's word in your car hallelujah amen. let me hear a big amen. amen yeah the bad news will destroy your life put in the sound very powerful that even the songs you play the songs you even play in your car there must be fed songs hallelujah amen. not that the songs that are telling you to do some nasty things right fed songs fed songs fed songs you slot your you pack your car you 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 start your car and the song is playing amen the atmosphere you need is that of faith it will come by what you hear in your car in your office in the house in the house what songs do you play amen check your check your environment what you hear can impact you for good or for bad but be a hearer of the faith message god bless you so much in jesus name amen. hallelujah amen. let's pray let's pray and thank god for god Brando, she, let's thank god master thank the lord baroni litaska thank you father we give you praise we thank you for your word oh yes lord we thank you for the word of faith thank you for lord imparting your word to us this night we we'll give you glory lord we bless your wonderful name we adore you for your word we thank you so much we thank you so much we bless you so much we are fruitful in our minds we are thinking good in our minds let your word impart our minds in jesus precious name i want to pray for somebody who has heard god's word tonight life is short and hell is hot you must do everything possible to avoid hell now that you have heard god's word you want to change your life repent that means change your life for god's kingdom is at hand i want to pray for somebody right now you want jesus in your heart you want to repent of your evil ways say with me lord jesus i believe you died for my sin on the third day you rose again i confess you as my lord and my personal savior I thank you, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus for, saving me. for saving me. Amen. Give God some clap offering now. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you so much. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm talking to our church members. If you are not a church member, um, it's not compulsory for you. Now, our church is Facebook. Church Facebook is our church now. This is our auditorium. This is our everything. So we do everything, announcement, everything. So you take your seat. It's for our church members who understand our giving. We give. And I'm not shy to say we must give online. I'm not shy about it. I'm not shy to say Christians who are believers, who understand this work, we must give online. This is our church service. We don't, we don't go to auditorium, but we do it here. We give. And you know why? Let me say something. There are some pastors who are in some village somewhere their life is this they are taking care of the sick taking care of people taking care of people in the village you know and that is their life and even in this covid people we still the church gives to people church members we give to people who are not pastors they are members of the church and they are in need and they call and we give them money the church gives money so if you can support we can also do good to others hallelujah because this COVID-19, the church gave so much. So much gave, went away. And that one, we don't talk about them. So, I want you to take your seat and give to God. Only our church members can give. If you are not part of us, don't, don't, don't give. But let's take our, before we give, please, let's take our communion right now. I almost forgot, amen. We are going to take communion. So, take your bread and take your wine and let's pray the bread you are holding is not just bread it's the body of jesus christ it's god's body it's god's body and the reverence you give to the body can be a blessing to you amen now i want you to pray this prayer with me say lord jesus, lord jesus in the night you were betrayed the night you, were you took bread, bread. gave thanks, thanks broke it, broke it. And, said, and said take, take eat, eat this is my, is my body broken for you, broken for you. Do, this do this to remember me, to remember I, thank you, jesus. I thank you jesus now this is your body, is your body. I, receive my I receive my healing i receive my fruitfulness, I receive my fruitfulness. In, jesus in jesus name amen let's take it now thank you lord
Take the blood. There's life in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's life here. There's somebody with a barren heart, a barren mind, a barren body, a barren womb. As to drink the blood, Jesus will heal you right now. The sickness you are suffering right now. You are, so, you are in pain. The Lord shall heal your pain right now. So take the blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't have anything, you just take water and let's bless it right now. And the Lord shall turn that water into wine. And that wine shall become his blood. And you'll be healed right now. Say, Lord Jesus, in the same manner, you took the wine and said, This is my blood of the New Testament shared for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it all of you to remember me. Lord, I remember you as my savior, as my healer. I, I remember you as my ascended king, my reigning king, and my soon coming king. As I drink this blood, may your life be imparted into me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's drink right now. Please, let's thank God. Blessing, thanksgiving is a way to amplify the miracle. Thanksgiving is a way to do, to do great things. Thank you for the Lord, for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Lift your voice and thank you. Just thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for healing, Lord. Declare something. Declare fruitfulness in your life. Declare it. I thank you. I'm fruitful in my mind, fruitful in my body. Fruitful in my work, fruitful, Lord, in the family, fruitful in everything I do. I thank you, I'm fruitful. Come on, declare, declare. Shiba Koste Brakato Sandoshki. Speak it out. Baro Shekalo Ziaza. Mareto Santande Kantalu. Zambanturia. Oh, Lama Shaka. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Be exalted. Be glorified. We thank you so much, Father. In Jesus' name. Say a big amen now. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's praise God. I'll come back to share the grace and we close. Amen. So you can, you can momo. I don't want to talk too much. Just momo. Whatever. The number is there. Just look at it and do it. And the Lord is watching and the Lord is blessing you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll come back in five minutes to close officially. God bless you.
Hallelujah. A fame to Yumbi, Name Yifu Naye. Tell you, you know, Meshel and Yonam. Say, Tan wedding, Kogu. See, you so wedding him. Ah, ye, Guama. Hallelujah. Oh, the first day, the first day we go to church, we shall run the floor plenty times. Hallelujah. But it's wonderful to have a wonderful time like this. God bless you so much. And I. Thank you so much for cooperating with us in this time of trial for the body of Christ worldwide. God bless you for tuning in. Let me tell you a story, and I want to say this short story. Two soldiers of Amer American soldiers went to the Vietnam War, and they were very good two friends. I mean, two very good friends. Now, they, they agreed that they would help each other throughout. One person was shot. And the person fell down. And he, he was immobilized. He couldn't move. So the other person went, but he realized that the friend was not coming. So he traced. When he went, the friend was lying down. He put him on his shoulder and then whisked him off the field. And the friend who was hurt told the one who was carrying, I knew you would come. I knew you would come. If nobody else comes on Fridays and Wednesdays, and Sundays, I know you will come. I know if nobody else comes, I know you will come. God bless you for um, being with us during this time of um, face, Facebook live broadcast. I trust God that the Lord will, will sustain you and the Lord will keep you from every satanic temptation and the Lord will preserve your life until we meet again. But Friday, the prayer continues, and Apostle Master and myself are coming to pray and um, to have a wonderful time in God's presence on Friday. Please don't ever stop doing, I mean, just don't, don't, don't miss it. Try and make sure you are with us on Friday for the one hour of prayer with me and Apostle Master. And also, please try and connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and um, Instagram and all those, there are some things that happen there. Small, small, small messages that, that, that you can hear can, can give faith into you, can put faith in your heart. Amen. I love you so much. And we are praying with you. And let's close right now as we pray. Let's pray for our doctors shortly, the doctors and uh, nurses who are facing the COVID 19 situation. Let's pray shortly that we can close. Father, we pray for Ghana. We pray for the world that your hand shall restore 
things in the world. We pray for American continent. We pray for Asia. We pray for Australia. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for Europe, Lord. In Africa in general, we pray that this COVID-19 demon shall find its way out and be subdued and become like any ordinary thing in the world so the world can continue living. We pray that those who have lost their jobs in this season shall be restored. Those who have, be, have suffered some way, Lord, you heal them. Heal the world, Lord, and let your name be glorified. We speak the blood of Christ on the nations. And may the cross of Jesus rule the nation. We insert the cross in the souls of nations that COVID-19 shall give way to prosperity one more time. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Let's share the grace now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be this night forevermore. Amen. Now, before I share the goodness, please send me testimonies. I want to hear testimonies of what God is doing in your life. I can share them before I preach. So, please go to um, uh, my Facebook page or the WhatsApp page. Judge, and you could just go to God, look for my name or whatever. Or Pastor Kofi or Papa Subans will send them the testimonies. Let's read what God is doing in your life. Live on Facebook. It's also going to also, also bless other people. God bless you. Surely, are following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's praise God and jump and praise God as we close. Bye-bye.
Let's go. 